Okay. So back to our Excel spreadsheet. All right, I'm going to come up to the top. So <clears throat> we've gotten through talents for our adult part. We've done a second line. Again, it's possible to do all of this in a single line. It's just it's more complicated. You uh, when you get into stuff like this, um, and so I don't want this to really be a class about spreadsheet design. Um, but anyway, is there anybody in here who's really into spreadsheet design? Just by So what? Oh no, swimsuit would again be depending on the swimsuit. Again, if it's your grandmother's swimsuit, that'll probably be a, a regular rate. But if it's a uh, yeah, but if it's like bikini, that kind of stuff, probably double rate. All right. So for those of you who are in spreadsheet design, I'll show you how to do this really quickly, just so that you know. So instead of doing this, like this is constructed like this, we wouldn't do uh, this here at all. We would keep this at, um, I'm, I, I've got to do all the calculation actually in the cell itself. So instead I put a one here, and I'm sorry, one here, hit the rate over for the rate over. I'm gonna go ahead and leave that at 450 because it'll be that for everything. But in this rate right now, what I would actually do is this, what it says right now is that it's equaling this, um, my B column right here times my C column right here, and that is the total that actually gets put in here. So, but that's not actually what I want to do. So what I'm gonna do instead is, I've got to come up and do an equal, and this cell's protected, so you would have to take off the protection, which means you've got to come up and actually say you wanna put in a password for this. So unprotect the sheet, then we can actually put this in here. Then in this case right here, I, this would be equal to 118 times, then all of this gets enclosed in parentheses so that it, we can keep a value outside of it. And then it would be plus, and then parentheses again, the five hours times, uh, and again, this rate right here, which is C7. So if you really want to geek out and do it in this way, you can take a look at this and we'll see. It was You guys ended up with like 57,000 plus, something like that. Yeah, I'm going to end up with hopefully 55,350, which is what I think if you add the lingerie rate down here would actually be if you add the 2250 to the rate that we had, do you come up with $53,350? You come up to data, down to, there's a, I'm sorry, tools, protection, and it just, it, they rotate. So I put in, do you protect it? Don't put in a password, because then when you want to unprotect it, the very same thing happens. You just, you don't need a password. But that's the protection is why these things uh, it 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 doesn't go to every single cell. All right. So, but in my case, I am going to leave in the launch rate. So I'm just going to go back in time um, to get rid of this because again, I made I'd already saved that. So to go back and not have to undo all these changes, I'm just going to close it. I'm not going to save it, and then I'm going to open it right back up again. And I should be, it should be looking pretty much like yours looks. And it does. Okay, we don't have any minors that we're actually doing in this. We don't have fittings as well. Again, fittings are when you would have work done ahead of, ahead of schedule to actually do that part, uh, to bring somebody in to have the clothes tailored. Um, we are not having any talent travel. When we're referring to talent here, this would be models. This is not digital tech or photographer. That's all taking uh, place up in the, uh, uh, the other part up there. So miscellaneous, <clears throat> we are going to deal with miscellaneous part right here. So um, catering. So we're going to do catering in this, and you can see that I've got a breakdown over here on the side, and basically the breakdown over here on the side is for $15 for breakfast, $25 for lunch. So I'm going to go ahead and do this for my crew. So that would actually be $40 a day, right? So in this case, this would equal 10 people in my crew times 5 days, and then this 400 is not 400, it's 40. Does that make sense? So what I refer to here is, when you're thinking about these things, is this would be 
50 people days. That's what that ends up being, right? Because I've got 10 people times five days. So that would be 50 of those. And so I've got $2,000 for catering. There is no charge for cell phones, studio expendables. Again, I would put in uh, $250 for this. And we'll just see what happens. I'm going to do the same thing for miscellaneous. Padding, and I actually might need it. Um, again, this the whole... Gaffer's tape. Foam core. You trash foam core. Who pays for it? Not me. <laughs> <laughs> um, the messengers and freight. Again, this is staying out of this, but this would some be something if you were responsible for getting close someplace. Those freight bills can be ten, twenty thousand dollars. I mean, they come. Stuff comes in these. Well, you've seen the kind of things. Have you ever seen the, those big steel ca aluminum cases that they load into airplanes? That's what people ship their stuff in. They because it's ready to go in an airplane. So it comes in, that's the cases that they do this stuff in. So what does it cost to send one of those things? What does it cost to send 10 of them? And then both ways, they got to go back. So it's, it's insane. But nonetheless, that's what this whole part's about. Studio background and backdrops. It didn't get really spelled out in, our, uh, 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 in the, the list that I gave you guys here. But so let's just assume that the studio background is a simple seamless. But I'm going to say probably let's plan on doing, are we going to do colors or are we just going to do white? What are we doing? Because, say what? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Well, we're bidding on it right now, right? So we would be shooting fall probably. No. I know, right? Okay. You got, I'm losing you guys. I can tell. <laughs> All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in a thing of seamless for each day. So I'm going to hit two days for that, and I'm going to charge $250 for each one of those seamlesses. So it'll be $500 in the back. That seems low to me. For the cost that we're doing on this studio set right now, that's seeming awfully low. So I'm going to change that to four seamlesses, and I'm going to do it at $350 a day. Um, we don't have a set or a set builder, so that would actually go down. If you did, you would actually have to get a set builder to do the location. I mean, to do the you, to do an estimate for you, you would send them the plans or the swipes or whatever and say, this is what I need, what will it cost, and they'll tell you about doing all of that. But remember, if you have a set built, where do you have it built? If it's built in their facility and they bring it over, they'll charge you to have it take up time in their place if you actually have it built in the studio that you're using then you have to have to pay for the rental of the studio while they're actually building the set in it so again how many days does it take you to build the set it'll take me three days well that's three additional days of studio rental so now you're into the studio for a week That's what most set builders would actually do in their own space. But nonetheless, that matters. Do you know the location that you're going to do this in? So how do you find it out? How do you find the residential locations? Again, location scout, how many days of that are you going to need? So what location scout means here, and guys, this is a difference that you guys need to know. Focus, guys, focus. Otherwise, this shit's going to burn you. So... What a location scout is, is that if I've got something really specific, okay, what I need for my location is I need a place that has a dock, a boat, a swimming pool, a veranda, a gazebo, and Spanish moss. That's what I need, the shooting that I'm going to do. So I can approach a location company. There's tons of location companies all in every major city. There's tons of them. They could have something on the books already that actually was that. But if they don't, they will offer to go look for it. And to offer to go look for it, they will charge you $650 a day. That's what the scouting part's all about. The rest of it, though, in terms of the location fee and permitting in this, it works a little bit different. In this case, they charge you the rate that they actually charge you for the location. They take their cut from the from the client, from the people who rent the place. So there is no markup on this part. So I'm not going to be that particular about it. Basically, I just want the pretty white house 
with a porch, some nice furniture, a swimming pool on a canal. That's what I'm looking for. Or actually on the beach. That part I'm looking for. Every location outfit in Miami will have this. So I'm going to do it for two days of this. However, you've got to decide on the location before you actually bid on this guy. You've actually got to look through the books because what happens when it turns out that the one that you really want is $5,000 a day? Oh, okay. Well, I blew that. So you get where this is going, right? Um, to be safe about this, I'm going to put in $3,000 a day because there's not much you're going to find for less than that. Again, I don't need to actually do the file search part in all of this, so I don't need uh, any of that part. Wardrobe, purchase, and rental, we said we don't need to do any of that. Props, we're not doing any of that. Shoot. Exactly. Shoot. Oh, wait, that's really funny you'd say that because this is for the residential part we've dealt with, but we haven't dealt for the beach at all. What does it cost to shoot on the beach in Miami? Do you know? It is not free. No. I know, but you didn't read the right thing. It all depends on the county that you're in. It was like a $1 million insurance Yeah, but that's, that you'll actually already have. So, okay, so let's do what you guys did. So let's go back out to oh, the website, whatever, and do a new Google search for uh, um, um, location fee, Miami Beach. It'll probably take me there. Uh, Miami locations to the five best locations to shoot in Miami Beach, blah, 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 the 10 best. Yeah, that's where you got to ultimately find, right? Do what? Oh, my gosh. What? Miami Hang on. I think I've actually got them. So did you find it? But you need insurance, like one Here. So, yeah, film and print, City of Miami Beach. So, let's click on that guy. It says nothing is found here. Miami Beach residents, visitors, I need to. Yeah. And that's one where it mentions like the million dollar liability and it's the hundred dollar stay number. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm looking for here. Oh, it's only on the Need to apply. Film and print. Okay, guys, look at this. Can I get everybody to go here, please? Hello. Right here. So I need to apply for, I'm at MiamiBeachFL.gov, Miami Beach uh, Film, and so I need to apply for a film and print permit. Apply for this now. Say okay to this. Who needs a permit? And it'll go through this whole part right here. So if your production utilizes uh, locations in Miami-Dade, are we in Miami-Dade? Do we know for a beach? I don't know. We would have to figure that part out. Um, Miami-Dade will charge a non-refundable $100 permit application fee. Did you miss that? But that's still hundred dollars. Yeah. <laughs> 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 
if your production will film exclusively inside of Miami, not down, you may apply for the permit by registering, blah, 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 online, blah, blah. There's no application for your permit associated with the Beach and Film Office. Note, this option cannot be used for emergency application, whatever. Okay, so who needs a permit? So we're going to go with option A. Again, I don't want to actually log into this, but I know, uh, for instance, there are um, that will actually get us our permit. However, <clears throat> would you shoot on Miami Beach without any security? So what's security cost? Off-duty rates for policemen in Miami. Who searched this out? No, so, say what? You always use off-duty police. Everywhere you do this, you use off-duty police. Because, I mean, it's a great thing. They all know each other. So when the police come by to stop you and say, what are you doing? You've got one of their own standing right there. It's great. If you're shooting in traffic, they stop traffic for you. They just take care of everything. It just makes so much sense. Uh, the city loves you when you do this, so you do it as a matter of course. No question about this. So I'm only shooting one day on the beach, so I need a police officer. And so I'm going to go at $35 an hour. So my policeman, did I just add somebody to my crew? Yeah. Yes, I did. Yeah. So again, you get where this whole thing is going, right? Yeah. Okay, so my policeman is going to be eight hours. No, he's going to be uh, 10 hours at um, $35 an hour. What do you want to bet that uh, 10 hours is not a normal day for a policeman, but eight hours probably is? So to do double time, I've got two hours of overtime. That gives me four to actually bill at his standard rate. So instead of 10 hours, he's now 12 hours at $35 an hour. Um, then I've also got to go back in and need to add money for uh, his catering because he's actually going to be there for that catering part as well. Um, then we add, need to get into here. Do we need a police detail? Is he going to have his car there? I don't know about that, so I'm just going to say no to that. So I'm going to go back into <clears throat> I'm going to go back into my Excel spreadsheet. See, thanks, because I'm not reading on this, and I don't even see where you are. Oh, it's right, it's right under. Right there. Uh, it's, the, it's the third one from the bottom. Yeah. $10 per hour per officer. Okay, so his rate just went to 45 an hour. Oh, Well, it's just the easiest way to do it. Yeah. Right? Okay, so uh, again, who's reading through all of this? Who's hiring the cop? That's your production coordinator. Okay, so. <laughs> Back into our Excel spreadsheet. So what I'm going to do down here again in unnamed expense number four is uh, beach application fee. I put in a one and put in 100 because that's what it was. The next one down is security. And we figured that was 12 hours at 45 an hour. So again, that's a quick, if we'd just blown that, that would be a quick uh, $640 mistake, leaving that guy out. Say so what? Said yeah, because he was 35 an hour, but then the city charges their $10 on top of that, so they just took it to 45 an hour. Um, so then I get into special rental equipment. At this stage of the game, guys, I would do another save, so I'm just going to hit Command S to do a save as. <clears throat> yes. Oh, thank you. See? I'm just trying to get through this by the end of the day, but you're absolutely right. No, but this this is why. No, I, I mean, Elizabeth, this is exactly why you have to do this stuff because it all ends up being circular. And then it's like, shit, I got to go back and do that. Okay, wait, the catering part. Yeah, I got to take care of the catering part. So back up into catering again. He's only going to be there one day. So again, what I've got here is that I'm adding one person to this. So this goes to 51 now. Okay, shoot. All right, so then to, when you get down to special equipment rental, again, the idea of traveling with your own gear is prohibitively expensive. So what most people will do, you have two options. You can either ship your gear ahead of time, and everybody uses FedEx to do it. Nobody will take their gear on a plane. It's simply too expensive. 
the prices of baggage on an airplane, your first bag starts out at 50 bucks, your second one is 50 bucks, your third one is 200 and every one after that is 200. If they're overweight, it's 200 on top of that. So the third bag that's overweight is $400 to send. And you're sending power packs and, you know, strobes and, you know, that shit, yeah, both ways. It will kill you. So most people will try to rent the location they're at or they will actually FedEx their gear ahead of time. But if you're FedExing it there ahead of time, not only how much does FedEx cost, who do you send it to? <laughs> so now a lot of hotels will actually allow you to ship it to them. I call them up and I'm staying at your hotel all next week. I need to send gear down early. And they'll say, sure, send it on down, whatever. They will store it for you, but they'll charge you for it. What do you charge to store my gear? $50 a day a bag. Well, I'm sending 10 bags. That's $500. And I'm not going to send it there to come in on Sunday. It can't come in on Sunday the day I get there. It's got to come in on Friday because Saturday delivery will cost me way much more than having them store it for another day. Well, so then where, so if I'm shipping my own gear down there and I'm not renting it, I've got to hire an assistant also here to help me collect the gear and then to pack it up to have it shipped down. So, uh, this doesn't it's not just like again this is you've got to figure it all out as if you were really truly doing this stuff right but so in my case we're good it's only going to happen i'm only picking gear up there so but what's the gear going to cost me so again i would have been in conversations with the studio rental place what this is my list of what i want you know what are you guys going to charge but in our case, I've also given you the, my uh, uh, invoice, uh, my uh, equipment rental uh, calculator. So if you go look at our website, it's right here. It's this equipment rental calculator. If you download that guy, this has actually got pricing that again will build in. Um, um, uh, numbers of days it will also build in uh, a markup for you so downloads okay so the way this guy starts out we went through this a little bit last week but I need to make sure everybody is comfortable with this how many days are we going to be doing rental I've heard two, I've heard five, I've heard seven. You guys don't have a fucking clue, do you? All right, if you get nothing out of this class. Well, you already have the importance of doing this on paper, but this one's a critical one because this is true of the entire photo industry and how it works. Your first three days of rental equals a week. So... If you rent on, let's say we're going to start on Monday, let's say, no, we'll start on Monday through Sunday. We'll just pick it. Seven days, right? You pay for Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. You get Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday free. Then if you go over, let's say you do eight days. Let's say you go Monday through Monday. So you're doing both of the Mondays. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday are you pay for. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday are free. Monday, you start over again for your first day. If you have two weeks of rental, Monday through 14 days later, right? You do the first three days of the first week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, you pay for. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday are free. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday of the next week you pay for. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday of that week are free. So three days equals a week. In our case, we're renting for five days, so we get hit with the three-day rental regardless. So in the enter number of days up here at the top, you put in a three. That will get us for our whole thing. Even if we had somebody picking up gear, conceivably even doing this, if we were going to get gear back on a Friday night, which is what the plan is, we could actually get an assistant to pick it up on Saturday. We would have to pay the assistant to pick it up and figure out a way to store it, but our rental wouldn't cost us any more. Does that make sense? Yeah. You good on that one, Aaron? All right. Yeah. 
Uh, Seventy percent markup again. That's there are two columns in here. This one that says uh, cost uh, and that says total is uh, is simply what it would cost with no, with no markup at all. The column next to it is this seventeen percent markup. If you want to charge more for your markup, you can change this value right here, and it will update all this column right here. But I'm going to leave it at seventeen percent. So how much gear do we need, and for when? Well, we've got to go back to how we're actually shooting, right? Are we, so we're shooting in the studio Monday, Tuesday. Is Wednesday location at the house or is Wednesday at the beach? The beach. It makes a difference. Am I going to pull a whole bunch of strobe gear out on the beach? No, but am I going to do it at the house? Yeah. Sure. That's where I'll be doing my lingerie stuff, all that kind of stuff, right? So does it make sense to rent for two days in the studio? take a day off, rent a different setup to actually take on location at the beach, and then go back to the gear? Does that make sense? Well, it doesn't really matter to me. It's not really going to hurt me one way or the other as far as that part goes. Um, my guess would be I would be better off doing the day at the beach in the middle and then just having the gear with me the whole time. So I'm grabbing everything. On Tuesday night, I'm grabbing everything. I'm grabbing all the gear for the house, but I'm also grabbing all the gear for the beach for the next day. But then, do I keep the beach gear? Am I going to shoot outside at the house? Well, this matters because I'm renting two completely different sets of gear. I'm renting, an, I'm renting strobe, indoor stuff, and I'm renting outdoor scrim, generator, that kind of stuff. What if you wanted to stop because you need to go in the pool? So that sounds like outside. It sounds like, but I also know I'm shooting inside. So I need all of my gear, my indoor and outdoor, both for the house, mm -hmm. right? So that's going to have an impact on how I bid this whole thing out, right? If it turned out that I did not need the outdoor stuff at the house, then I would have to do this calculator twice. I would have to do it for my indoor gear that I'm going to keep the whole week. But then I would do one single day for the day at the beach. Does that make sense? And there's no way I can do both in this calculator because you have to set up the number of days that you're renting up at the very beginning to begin with. Does that make sense? Yeah. We good on that? So, but in our case, since we are keeping all of it at least three days, the three-day thing will be fine, and we'll just go down through the whole mess. Make sense? Okay. So, how many packs do you guys work with when you actually travel? Two. Okay. Standard location kit. Standard location kit for me, anyway. Four packs, eight heads. It's just always that way. So this top one right here, you can see actually here is four packs, eight heads. <clears throat> so again, this is the advantage of not having to figure out the number of days we're really doing this with. So these are kits, and each one has a pack and two heads. So we need four of those. That gives me four packs and two heads. Do I feel comfortable in having a backup? Is that my backup in case I lose a pack on location? No, if not, I actually need to add another pack for that. And that's what you would do actually right down here. I'm going to add one pro photo pack down here to that as well. So I've really got five packs, eight heads. Does that make sense? I feel pretty confident about the eight heads because what I talk about with eight heads, I need a hair light, two edge lights, and a main light for my figure. I need at least two lights for a background, possibly three. That's seven. I can afford to lose one head. That's just the way I figure it. You guys good with that? All right, let's keep going down. What else are we going to rent here? So go down here. <clears throat> I work with spot grids all the time. I'm going to put in two uh, sets of spot grids. I am going to do a beauty dish. You don't need to rent an extra one of those. They don't break. I am going to do a spot grid with that beauty dish. Um, do you want to take battery out on the beach? They're batteries. Oh, generator. I personally prefer generators. Batteries run out. So I'm going with the generator instead of the battery thing. All right, so we'll leave the battery part behind. Um, I always do a couple of head extension cords. I am going to do one octobank, just in case I get lazy. Uh, I am going to do a couple of strip boxes, of the Chimera strips. Uh, I'm also going to do a couple of umbrellas, just in case. Um, I don't really use a lot of reflectors and barn doors. That would be up to you guys. If I've got four packs and a camera, 
That's five pocket wizards. I'm gonna do six because I need a backup in case something goes down on me. For C stands, I've already got eight heads right here. So that would be eight to begin with. I'm also gonna take at least four flags to go with me. So that's 12 C stands. I'm gonna round it up to 15 because that sounds like a better number. Because again, all of a sudden I need a clothing rack out on the beach. I can do that with two C stands, right? So I'm gonna put in 15 for my C stands. Uh, super booms, that's just a regular boom. I'm gonna take one of those. Um, I don't need any speedo stands or floor stands. I am gonna, what, are, is this in Miami? What time of the year? Uh, fall. fall. Okay, so it's fall, that would be fine. You only need one wind machine for the model. But if it's, if, I'm sorry, what? Oh, so if you're shooting fall, we're shooting next week. Yeah. yeah. Okay, 1st of March wouldn't be too bad heat-wise, whatever, but if this ends up being July, you end up with three real effects wind machines because you've got one for the model, one for you, and one for the art director. <laughs> and everybody else just suffers. No, it's a true story. It's true that everybody rents wind machines to blow air on themselves because you cook. Uh, so in our case, though, we won't do it in the middle of June in Miami because we're not that stupid, so I'm going to say no to that. I am going to actually grab a heavy-duty tripod. I am going to grab... Four flags, these would be, uh, again, just cutter flags that we use like in the studio. I'm also gonna do two nets. Uh, I would do at least two, actually I'm probably gonna do three. I'll just do a set. So I've got a red, a green, and a, a, a red, green, and a blue. Um, just so that I've got, again, this is the, the, the nets to, um, if I've got somebody, well like if I'm shooting Savannah and what she's wearing right now, uh, typically the light would be coming up from the top. She's got on a light top, dark bottom. I would I need to cut light off of her shirt to get the uh, pants to actually show up. So you use flags to actually, uh, uh, nets to actually do that part. Uh, apple boxes, yeah. Oh, oh, sorry, 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 yeah. Sorry. Can see that now? Oh, sorry. Uh, apple boxes, apple boxes are the tables, the chairs, the stools, the everything when you're actually shooting on location. So I'm going to bring... How many? No, I'm not going to do 20. i got to carry that shit. 10? 10 sounds like a good number. Um, I don't need halves or anything else. A clamps, I'm going to do 10 A clamps. Uh, super clamps, I'll do 10 of those as well. Uh, knuckles, I, you could probably add four or five in there. But most of, uh, we've got, again, uh, the uh, C stands are all going to have arms on it, so they're all going to have knuckles built into that. Extension cords here, I'm going to grab five of those, uh, depending on how far I need to get out. For the moving blanket, I am going to use moving blankets because, again, I need to put stuff on the floor of the house that I'm going to go shoot in to set gear on top of. So I'm going to do five of those. Beach carts, at least, yes. They're probably like a, um, this screen to here. So that part about that tall. Yeah, that sounds about right. Isn't that about an 8 by 8 ish Close. Yeah. Beach, so beach carts are critical, not just to shooting on the um, uh, a beach, uh, but also actually move wherever you're at into a studio I mean into a, a, a house so I'm gonna do at least two beach carts um, mag liner everybody uses a mag liner to be there I'll show you yeah oh here it's this So it's this, and what everybody uses it for, most of them come with a shelf down here as well. It looks more like this. Um, and so this um, is where you put all of your computer stuff, and then all cameras go down here, unless you're doing tower stuff, in which case a tower goes down here and a monitor and keyboard and that kind of stuff goes up here. But it's your portable move-around digital setup. <clears throat> Yeah. Okay. Back to Magliner. Is there anything that we've forgotten that you guys can't think of so far? Now, we haven't gotten into cameras yet, and we also haven't gotten into outdoor gear yet, either one. So this is all split apart. Again, that'll all be location. But we don't need to pay for 
Uh, I was going to say, so we're going to pick this thing up so you can leave zero in for delivery. But did you think about tax? What's sales tax on gear in Miami? Oh my God. Say what? No, you're not. You should know that. You're not. Ex if you have tax exempt status in Illinois, it's not. You're not exempt from rental. Rental is not considered a product or a purchase, so you pay tax on it. So back to nope, guys. Back to back to Google new and do um, uh, equipment rental tax Florida or Miami. E Q U I P T. Well, I'm going to put it in Miami because it could be more. Uh, taxable rental versus non-taxable service, and they're taking me to Florida sales tax, some attorney. It looks like 6% right here, so that's what you would actually put in there. My calculator's got it at 7. I'm going to leave it at 7. We'll just have it a little bit more padding. Um, okay, and we don't need to do delivery. So in this case right now, I've got two options, and you guys have to tell me in these two options, are we going with the markup or not? No, I wouldn't. I'm either in or I'm out. All right, use the markup. So I'm going to actually copy this. So my equipment rental is $5,588. That's actually not unreasonable. It's not all of it yet, but that's not unreasonable. We're not there yet. We're, we're getting there. Okay, so um, back to my Excel spreadsheet, the calculator for this guy, I would put in for special equipment one, and because you don't need to do this per day, and then the t and just put in the total, 55.88. Okay, digital rental equipment, this is cameras. We need to go back into our uh, calculator for our equipment. <clears throat> in this calculator, we start out again. How many bodies are you going to shoot with? A minimum of two. You need one and a backup. What lenses do you like to work with? Well, so for me, I would clearly do a 28 to 70, and I would also do a 70 to 200. So that gives me relative wide to relative telephoto. Now, personally, <clears throat> I'm a huge, uh, I love telephoto lenses. I shoot a lot of long lenses. Um, the 300 and the 400 are both exquisitely beautiful lenses that I could use uh, out on location. So here's the deal. Back to the morality question. The only place I can really use those long lenses is going to be the beach day. So I really only need to rent them for one day. However, I've got a setup right here that's going to be a three-day rental. Would it be immoral if I sent my assistant back to the rental place after our beach day with the two lenses that I rented to give back to them so that I only pay one day for both of those lenses but still charge my client for the three-day rental? No, we don't care. <laughs> See, you guys, no, again, no, but this is, we have gone from two weeks ago where there was moral outrage and indignity about all of this to... Well, I see how this is all beginning to work. <laughs> because it is not enough for you to simply make your fee. It's enough for you to make your fee, and then you make money on every other profit center you possibly, possibly can. So I'm not only going to do that, but I'm going to leave the mark in up on it as well. So I'm not just getting two extra days of this in my pocket. I'm getting two <laughs> extra days plus the 17% markup on it as well. And if you look at the cost of both of those lenses, hang on just one second. Um, between the two of them, that's $200. So for, uh, again, I'm going to do, that's $200 a day. Um, that doesn't count my 17 markup. I don't know what that is. But that's for 200, uh, two extra days, whatever. So that's just another $400 I just made. Yes. Well, when clients ask to see, like, receipts. Yes. Yes, they do all the time. So your receipts need to reflect what you are asking them to pay you. Yes, I know we did. All right, so I'm going to put in a 300 and a 400. 
the 600 is also a really beautiful lens, but it's not, and it's just, it's not really sharp enough. Most clients won't really be happy with it. But the three and the 400 are spank E. And if you shoot them relatively wide, you get these beautiful blown out soft backgrounds, whatever. It's a real depth, it's a beautiful depth of field play. But I've also told you guys my new favorite lens of all time right now that I'm shooting with is at 85 millimeter. That's not on here. So I'm going to add it down here to, so this will be an 85 millimeter. We did look it up last time, so I'm going to go to the place that we looked it up again really quickly because I don't remember what it was, what they actually charged for it. It was $30. Was it $30? So again, Trek Rental is a great one to go to. Um, I'm trying to think of the other really big places in uh, um, Adorama in New York is another good place to go to. Um, at any rate, so $30. Okay, so we'll put $30 in. So, uh, Pro Gear. Uh, okay, so we're going to do uh, um, <clears throat> one of these at 85, I'm um, sorry, $30. And again, it'll do all the calculating for you. Um, let's see, I'm not going to shoot any medium format. I don't need any of that part. I uh, am going to rent a couple of CF cards because if I'm running around on the beach, I don't want to be doing it tethered. So I'm going to put in four cards. I'm going to do two card readers in case I lose one. I am going to do a color meter. I am going to do a flash meter. Laptops. Are you working on your own? No. no, you are not. So two laptops because you need a backup. Uh, I also would have the viewing hood, the whole nine yards for this. Again, I showed you guys. Did we look at that? And what was it? C. What was the name of the company? No, the, the, the name of the company that makes the hoods. Seaport. Is that it? Yeah, Seaport Digital. So again, you need this to be working. You need this for the house. You need this for the beach. You wouldn't need it for the day in the studio, though. Yes? So the digital tech wouldn't bring his own gear, though, right? He could, but then he would be charging for it. I'd rather me charge for it and make the money. You would only get one laptop? I put in two, I thought. I got two laptops right here. Oh yeah, because it that's not something that's going to break. Then you have to ask yourself if you're going to work with an external monitor. I'm not going to rape them, so I'm going to leave the external monitor off. Um, okay, so in our case right now, so again, are we doing the markup? Well, we've done it once. We might as well do it again. So that's four thousand nine hundred and one dollars. So that goes back into here, and for our digital rental. Four, what did I just say that was? No, I, yeah, 4901. I don't know. Here, take a look. So, two camera bodies, uh, one uh, 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 20 to 70, 170, 200, one 300, one 400. Uh, four CF cards, two card readers, one color meter, one flash meter, two laptops, a viewing hood, and an 85 millimeter lens. Did you put in thirty dollars for this for the lens? Yeah. Don't know what to tell you. So wait, what are you saying you have? Um, I have 4845. 4845. 4901. Right. All right. Okay, then I need my location gear. I need stuff to be able to shoot outside. Okay, so for me, <clears throat> We said pretty much that we were going to do only single, so I don't know that I need a 12 by 12 for this. <clears throat> I can do a 6 by 6, so I would actually do that, but I'm going to start with the white tarp on the ground. That's a must. If you don't know how to use that thing, you need to take my assisting class. Uh, I'm also going to get one blackout curtain as a negative fill. I am going to do a 6 by 6 overhead. <clears throat> White umbrellas, typically what these are, people use these also like they use sun swatters, but they also use them to get out of the shade. 
So again, I'm going to put in two of these uh, to keep for that. As far as the sun bounces go, I'm going to put in two for that. And I'm also going to do two sun swatters because you just never know. I'm not going to use a reflected mat board. It's a four by four board, solid board with a frame, but I like the sun swatters better. So I'm going to leave it at that. Uh, I'm going to need two roller stands to actually hang that frame from. So I'm going to do two mediums. I don't need highs. For the sandbags, I'm going to put in 20. <clears throat> For the generator, I'm going to put in two. If I was shooting in the winter time here in Chicago, I would put in heaters for this. Are we going to do fog machine? No. Did I tell you about my Dennis Menarchy story? Dennis Menarchy, another famous photographer here in Chicago, um, who actually was Irving Penn's assistant for quite some time, was doing a, a shooting at, um, there's a really, what's the really famous golf club in... West Virginia that has the underground bunker for all the for Congress. They have a bomb shelter for Congress underneath it. All right. Okay, you don't believe me. North Carolina. Uh, no, wait. I'm sorry. West Virginia. A golf course, golf club, a bomb shelter. The green bar. <laughs> Say what? <laughs> oh yeah, I'm sure they do. So at any rate, it's the green bar. It's one of the most famous golf courses in the entire world. So at any rate, he's shooting some ad campaign. I don't know what it was for. I think it was for shirts or something like that. But he goes to the green bar, and Dennis is just the guy. Did you guys see the camera that got mounted on the back of a semi trailer truck? It was the camera, it was a view camera the size of a house? Yes. That's Dennis oh, Menarchy. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, he's like bigger, go bigger, go home kind of guy. Anyway, he decides he wants to fog the Greenbrier. <laughs> so he gets like, oh like 50 or 60 fog machines because he wants to do the entire background. He doesn't want to fog where they are. He wants the whole misty blue mountain background shit. So he's got to fog like acres and acres and acres of golf. So he has just... He's got 50 people out there with 50 fog machines just letting it go. And he blankets the golf course. And so all the golfers who've like gone there and paid their fortune and done all that kind of shit, whatever, it's just like he he's he he like they they got in quite a bit of trouble doing it. But at any rate. Yep, that's what I'm talking about. Um anyway, okay, wait, focus guys. We gotta get through this. We gotta get through this. Because we've also got to format this stuff. So at any rate, um, so sure, we'll throw in a fog machine. We'll only get one because we really, I doubt that's going to happen. Doorway dolly, what's that? <clears throat> if you want to do tracking shots, how do you guys do tracking shots? <laughs> Savannah, yeah. you're my photographer. Oh FC. My God. Oh my God. Okay. FC, grab your water. That's your camera. Let's oh. pretend here. <laughs> I can't wait. Yep. All right, hold on. You good? All right, get your camera like you're shooting. Come oh, yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, here. Oh, yeah, That's yeah, how yeah. you dolly. Like. Right? However, that gets to be tricky because it's usually they're too high. Most people want to, I like to shoot lower. So you get things called doorway dollies. It's a, a piece of film gear that's got four wheels, and it's actually designed to do this. Well, here, I'll show you one. Again, we'll Google it. Um, if you need to get rent this stuff, there's cinema houses here that are much better than Pro Gear. You would you won't find this at Pro Gear, but they call it a doorway dolly. Um, I use them everywhere. I use them going up and down the street. This is what they look like. So you sit on these things, and they um, the this one comes off, and this guy, and they either push you or pull you. But you can actually get a tripod set on it. Um, and it's um, uh, it doesn't bounce a lot. It's pretty, um, as far as suspension goes, uh, they don't bounce a lot. So at any rate, uh, however, <clears throat> I am not going to rent a doorway dolly for this. Okay, you're right, why not? You can't really use them on the beach, but so I'm not going to use the doorway dolly on this. So we are going to use a ladder, guys. I use a ladder for, I would always have a ladder in case I need to run up and do something on top of a boom. And then this is an easy pop-up tent. 
This again is where you want to park your clients. This is where you'd want to get your gear. Hair and makeup could go in here if they had to. So we'll actually just put in one for this pop-up tent. That part will actually be there. <clears throat> then again, that is my location stuff right here is $3,170. So that goes into my form. $3,170, yeah. It's just there in order. So you'll see it's the very next one down. So again, oh, this has got lenses. Do grip then. One, three, one, seven, oh, is that what we said? Okay. Studio rental. <clears throat> I've got two days of studio rental at $1,200 a day. That's a good average price for studio rental. So travel. <clears throat> I do need motorhome. Again, we need a motorhome definitely for the day at the beach because that's what you're working out of. That is going to be your center for hair and makeup, for styling, for lunch for getting out of the sun, the whole nine yards, that would actually be there. Most houses require that you work out of an RV as well. They won't let you do, <clears throat> they don't want you coming in and setting up your hair and makeup studio on their beautiful, you know, kitchen with, you know, marble tile and all that kind of, they just don't want that to happen. So typically we would always grab an RV for those. So I've got three days at $750 for the day. <clears throat> parking, tolls, gas, and mileage. You've got to rent your own cars for this stuff. We haven't gotten into the car rental thing yet, but how much are you going to spend on gas or tolls? <clears throat> I don't know that we need to actually look up gas prices as much as you just need to consider this, so I'm just going to put a figure in of $500. I don't really know, but that's what I'm going to actually put in here for it. Um, car van rental. What does it cost? So this is typically what I do. When I go on location to shoot, I will rent a 15-person cargo van and have them remove all of the seats except for the top, to the front two. Okay, so that's what I use as my equipment rental. Uh, you can usually get them with blackout curtain, uh, not blackout curtains, but blackout panels all the way around. Because I also, I am a gambler here. I also leave my gear in the van overnight. Sometimes I'll pay the um, uh, the doorman at the hotel 50 bucks to keep it uh, parked up right next to them overnight. Um, but I have been known to let it just sit in really strange places. Yeah, uh, I don't. Well, wait, wait, wait. I don't leave uh, cameras in there. I wouldn't leave any computer stuff in there. I would, I'll leave this expensive shit. But if somebody wants to steal all my C stands, fucking go for it. <laughs> you know. Yeah, and can you imagine opening up the van and seeing a bunch of C stands and nothing else and go, wow, hit pay dirt, you know? So at any rate, how much does it cost to rent a van though? So we are going to be there from Sunday. We're picking it up on Sunday. So it's going to be Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then Saturday because that's the day we're jumping on the plane to go back. So it's going to be a seven-day rental. So again, what does it cost to rent a 15-person passenger van? I don't know, so I go to Expedia. <clears throat> Just guess. What does a 15-person passenger van cost to rent a day? I'm just curious. You got 80, 100, somewhere in there? Say what? 200? Okay, well, and then clearly we need to go there. So, um, picking up in Miami. Dropping off same place. We'll say we'll do it for this coming Sunday. Oh, guys, you should pay attention to this one. Don't pick the day like this. Some people will actually charge more or less depending on whether you're doing weekend days or not. So even though we don't know which Sunday to Saturday it is, you should pick Sunday to Saturday to actually try to get a better idea. So I'm going to do the 18th to the 24th. And hopefully they will give me options right here. They're not going <clears> to... <throat> And no, you do not want a minivan. Okay, wait, wait. Oh, van. Boom. Oh my God. All right. So I've got $35 a day, great deal. Do you think there is a prayer in hell I'm going to put that amount of money in there? 
No, because this is not. This is some full-size van thing. This is a 15-person passenger van, 120 bucks, and that is the member's price, right? So I'm actually going to look at this $1,000 that they've scratched out. What's 1000 divided by 7 No, you can't do this, guys. You've got to go through this shit. 7 30 20 um, no. 30, 24, 60, let's call it $140 a day. Wait a second. Guys, you got to focus on this. This is how you're going to get fucked. Does this include taxes? No. So again, I've got to like reserve this thing and hopefully I've got to walk through the whole thing to find out that, oh, it's a 20% charge to actually put this, pick it up at the airport and to take it back. So not included in this are extra hours. Do we get taxes in this guy? Does, total includes. Okay, fine. So I'm good on that. So I'm going to put in $140 for my seven days. <clears throat> uh, we'll get to that. Okay, so I've got seven. I've already got 150 in there, so I'm just going to leave the seven, uh, the 150 in there. <clears throat> However, this will get two people of my crew around in all my gear. Is that enough? No, I've still got myself as the photographer because I don't ride with gear. Um, I've got a digital tech. No, those people can get around in the motorhome. I can get those people around in the motorhome. So anybody who's local, I don't need to worry about. They'll have their own cars, that kind of stuff. It's my crew that I need to move around. So I need to move four people around. So I need to get another rental car. So this is not going to be enough here. So I need to rent a second car. So this will be second rental car. You want to take Uber to the hour away location? No, I like <laughs> Because I can promise you they will charge you more than renting a car. Okay, so my second rental car, again, is going to be for seven days. And then go right back to our Google site. We want to do this in comfort. So, again, I don't need to be crazy about this. But, do you know, it's like, it's, it's ridiculous. Economy is like $10 less than a full-size car. So I'm just going to get a full-size car, and it looks like I can do one for, well, this is a good one right here. I would never pick $9 a day. you got to be kidding me. That's priceless. Bullshit. I'm going for the $37 a day one right here. Again, you need to check to make sure that this thing has got all the taxes included. Okay, total included. So are you really going to put $37 in on this form? What are you going to put in? Uh, 50 You know, you guys got to be reasonable about this. Uh, okay, so we're almost there, you think. Airfares. So I'm flying six people from here to Florida, right? So I'm going back to Expedia again. How many of you guys actually priced the flights out? And what did you get? I got 77 round trip. Uh, 70. Wait, you got what? 77,000? What? 77 what? For seven people, so $11 a person. <clears throat> Whoa. I do not fly. It had to be it had to be Spirit Air, right? Yeah, I do not fly Spirit Air. So we are going to do flights for Miami the same dates, <clears throat> Chicago to Miami. I'm only going to do it for one person so I can just figure this whole thing out, even though I think that just said two. Okay, sorry, go back. Okay, who in this room wants to start flying? Okay, we're only doing nonstop, period. And how many people want to start at 6 in the morning? None of us, right? Oh, 5, 15 in the morning, not doing that gay either. 8.30, no, but that, that's, that actually puts in too late. If I've got to do anything in location, say like I want to go look at the location. Maybe, maybe if we do location scouting on Sunday, I can charge for a full day. What do you think? Should we do that? 
<laughs> no, but I'm serious. If they don't know where we're going to go do this, if we need to do location scouting on that day, I've never gone on a location job where everybody had it all planned out. We always did location scouting. Does that make it a work day as opposed to a travel day? Yeah. Does that mean we have to change all of this? Yeah. Okay, so that means I'm going to go for this 8.30 flight in the morning because that will give me the afternoon to actually do this, right? Yeah. Yeah. So it's 224... Yeah. 220... That's the wrong flight. That's 8.30 p.m. Oh, sorry. You're absolutely right. That would be a problem. 8.45. Okay, so we'll do 8.45, we get there at 1 o'clock. That's okay. So that's 2.44, but I haven't picked my return yet on this guy. So I've got to pick a return to make sure that something is decent. No, guys, we can't leave until late that night. Or are we flying out on Saturday? We are flying out on Saturday. And I've got, is this marked on Saturday? Yep, okay, so we're good to fly out on Saturday. What time do you guys want to get up and fly out? You want to hang around the pool, have breakfast? Yeah. Okay, I do too, right? So why don't we pick, uh, I don't know, guys. What do you think? Let's go for the 11.15. That doesn't really give us a lot of time, and that's Frontier. I wouldn't do it anyway. So 10.45. Oh, let's do this one, the 150 American. We only need to add $179 to our ticket to do that. Yeah. Oh. No, you probably are, but that's okay. <laughs> okay, so wait, so wait, so wait, guys. So we're at 422. Is that what it costs you to fly? What? Round trip, one person. No. What about your baggage fees? Wait, no, we're getting to food. But no, your baggage fee for every person. You're, you can take down, I'm going to take down one bag, but I'm also going to take down my cameras. Can I get away with that? Yeah, I can tear, carry my cameras on, whatever. So, but I'm going to check one bag. Can the stylist check one bag? No, she's going to be checking a bag for herself, but she's for her clothes, but she's also going to be checking her styling bag, her toolkit, her steamer, her all that kind of shit. That's all going with her, right? So everybody, basically, so the way I've got to figure this out is that for me, that's $100 on top of this for everybody. It's 50 bucks each way. So now my ticket per person is four hundred and uh, is five hundred and twenty-two dollars. I'm going to round it up to five fifty, but then I've got to put in baggage fee for one of my for the stylist to actually do her stuff. So I'm going to go back to my calculator. <clears throat> We've got six people at we just said five fifty, right? It was four. It was four twenty-two. I'm rounding it up to four fifty plus a hundred bucks for the baggage fee. Um, I've run out of extra rental car plus that I can actually, uh, I mean, I've, I've got so much actually going on down here that I've run out of extra things and you can't add something to this. So, oh, baggage excess. Perfect. So I'm going to put in one here and 100 for that because again, it's 50 bucks both ways for her extra bag. I knew I had that in there. Per diem. <clears throat> so what per diem actually is, is that in some cases this would be for everything. This would be for breakfast, lunch, and dinner for everything. That's not what's really happening to us. So this gets to be a little tricky how we're going to figure this one out. So for us, breakfast and lunch for five of our seven days are taken care of. Does that make sense? Because they're already built into the catering. So what I've got to do is figure out the cost for my crew for everything else. So again, this becomes more difficult to do, but I'm going to put a one in here to just start it. In the calculator here, I'm going to erase this part. I'm going to put in equals, and then inside of parentheses, you put all of the math for relative things. So <clears throat> for the my... Um, um, for my um, uh, um, two extra days. So, okay, basically, I have six people that this is happening to because I don't pay for anybody who is local. So this is just the people who are actually traveling. So I would do six times. <clears throat> and then again, for these two days, my travel days, I can do, I'm going to do dinner for the one at night, but I can't really do breakfast or lunch for the ones to begin with. So this gets to be complicated here. So basically what I need to charge for is I need to charge for 
breakfast and lunch on the trip down, dinner on the way, uh, I'm sorry, uh, I'm sorry, I'm going to do dinner on the way down, breakfast and lunch on the way back. Does that make sense? Because otherwise, they're not in there. So I, we're all flying down. We get down there at like 1 o'clock in the afternoon. I only need to pick up dinner on Sunday, our day we arrive. Then our day coming back, we're going to do breakfast at the hotel, and we'll probably do grab something, some kind of lunch something at the airport as we're leaving. <clears throat> so basically, I've got one of these happening. I've got breakfast, lunch, and dinner for one day equivalent. Make sense? So this 6 would be times 90. <clears throat> Then close parentheses, do a plus. Then we need to figure out dinner for all the nights that my crew is going to be there. So again, opening parentheses, we are going to have five nights times six people. So again, six times five times 50 bucks is what I'm giving everybody for dinner. Close parentheses. Does that make sense what I'm doing up here? If you can't figure it out like that, just do it out on paper. Do the math out on paper, figure out what the total is going to be, and then just put a 1 in the uh, B column and that total in the, a col in the C column, and you'll have it. Does that make sense? But in our case, it turns out to be $2,040. That's going to be in addition to the catering. Um, there is going to be no per diem for talent. Hotel. What's a hotel cost? First off, we need to start and figure out how many room nights we need. So I have six crew members times five nights or six nights? Six. It's six nights. It's Sunday night, Monday night, Tuesday night, Wednesday night, Thursday night, Friday night. Six nights. So it is equal. You can just do that in your head, but it would be 36 uh, uh, room nights. And then the cost per hotel, per room, per night. I'm going to stay at the Raleigh because that's where I love to stay. <clears throat> so this actually happens. <clears throat> People will, um, um, TripAdvisor will allow me to book it so it'll give me a price. Um, People have been known to put the photographer and the creative art director in the really nice Raleigh hotel and then stick the entire crew at the eight days motel by the airport. <laughs> Happens all the time. I'm not going to bid it that way, but if you had to drop your bid, do you go after your fee or do you put your crew in the eight days motel? Sorry, guys. What can I tell you? So I said we're going to go from the 18th to the 24th. That's what I said we're going to do. And um, we'll just do it for one person here. I don't share rooms. <clears throat> it's for, yeah, but again, it's only going to be one room. They don't change anything if you change that part. So, there's no availability for my dates, you fuckers. All right, so let's go out to, we'll do it a month later. It's a really popular hotel. Uh, we'll go out two months later. <laughs> not on your life I'm going to try one more month out and then I'll give up All right, so let's look. Oh, we'll stay at the Delano. Let's stay there. $382 a night. So we'll view the hotel. Does this include taxes? This is a biggie here, and we really need to make sure that that's going to be... Okay, so I'm going to view the deal here. Uh, so I've got 368 do we know if that actually has taxes in it or not? No, it doesn't, or we don't know. All right, I'm going to select my room. But this is the whole thing. You've got to carry this through to the point that you're ready to pay for it to actually find all of this out. So those dates are fine. It already tells me what I've got. 
excludes the 4560 daily resort fee. Yeah, so that 368. See, this is the kind of shit that I'm talking about, right? So you've got to go through all of this stuff. Let's go ahead and try to reserve it, see if they let us. So here is what my total... Wait, guys, here's what my total is going to be right here because it also didn't include taxes. So I've got the total due. Somebody who's got a calculator really quick. They can do $2,611 divided by 6. What do you come up with? 435. No, wait, I'm sorry. That's not. That's wrong. That's wrong. That's wrong. I need the $2,884.74 divided by 6. $480. So we were going to quote a $380 for the room fee because that's what it said. But the true cost is $480. That's $100 difference. But I've got it times 36 room nights. That would have been a $3,600 underestimate on this. So yeah. So $480. Okay, we've done the excess baggage part. So for the insurance part, the insurance policy that I showed you that I carry has got the indemnity part that you need to rent uh, both the houses in Miami Beach as well as the house in Miami Beach. Remember we looked at that whole certificate of insurance that you need to have business insurance in order to get that. So I already own that, but that doesn't mean I don't want to recover that cost. It costs me about $1,200 a year to have that. So again, if you figure I'm shooting 100 days, for every single day is about $12 a day on that. So here it's five days that I'm doing this job on. So um, that just seems awfully low to me. I'm not going to put in 60 bucks for this. So I'll put in $350. That sounds like a reasonable fee to insure a photo shoot. Uh, I'm not going to add any uh, shoot insurance on this. Um, I will leave it at the liability show. Uh, I'm not going to do any insurance writers on this. And so I've come up with my total. And to get it to be called out, hold down the Option Command and hit the letter X, and it will pull it all out for you. And there you go, $160,569 for a five-day shoot. That's a deal. A deal? Do I go up to what? <clears throat> for gear? Yeah, digital equipment, I have $4,901. Again, this will work in, okay, so the shortcut, it's listed right up here at the very top. Use Command Option X to invoke that shortcut. <clears throat> and the advantage of that shortcut is if we change anything, you simply redo it again. So let's say you decided that the rental car really should be $75. You simply click on 75 to enter that, and then again, Command Option X, and it'll redo it all for you. So I'm going to undo that. I'm going to go back to the 50 bucks. <clears throat> so then, guys, we've got to answer ourselves a fundamental question in this. <clears throat> For me, this is how I would approach this. It's $160,569. I could add $400 to this, and it would still appear the exact same way to the client. It wouldn't appear one bit of different because they're going to look at the $160,000 number. So I could bump this up 400 bucks. I could pad $400 into something else. I would probably go up into my, uh, um, my miscellaneous here in Studio Expendables, and I would do those at $450 each. Do my Command X again, whatever. And now again, it's still $160,000. It's not going to look any different to anybody, but I've just padded it another $400. And if I can pull that off in my invoicing, that's great. That's another $400 I just made. Does that make sense? But the other question that you've got to ask yourself, if we go back to where things were, if I pull this part instead, <clears throat> I'm going to kill the Studio Expendables and the Miscellaneous both. I'm simply going to eliminate them. Again, I'm doing my command X, uh, 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 command <clears throat> uh, option shift X. This has gotten me down to $160,069. Can I knock another 70 bucks off of this somehow? And why wouldn't I, right? So again, instead of my uh, insurance uh, binder here being for uh, 350, I'm going to make it for 275 dollars. 
and now I've dropped this down. Instead of looking at that $160,000, they're looking at $159,000. From a psychological point of view, that's a huge leap in my opinion. 162 to 161, name eh, not so much, whatever, but the difference in that 160s and 159s, zeros, whatever, just seems to me to be a leap that I would do in just in terms of thinking about this. Does that make sense to you guys? What did you drop? So I got rid of my miscellaneous and studio expendables, and I changed the shot insurance from 350 to 275 because I needed another 75 bucks out of there. Are there questions about this? Are we good on this? Oh. So anyway, at this stage of the game, guys, at this stage of the game, I'm going to save this work. Command S will actually save it. Now, in my case, we can actually look again. I've got this more set up to work on my, um, um, for me, to work on my uh, stationery. So if we go back to the ASMP assignment estimate form, we're going to go through and fill this guy out really quickly, and I'll show you how to format this part. So it says here, <clears throat> the uh, basically what it's saying to you in this is that um, uh, to look at the stuff in the italics, whatever, you need to do the description of it, all this, whatever. This is where to put this stuff in. It sort of walks you through. Most estimates are developed, are done electronically now, so we're going to want to do this as a PSD, I mean as a PDF. I would do this on my own personal stationery. That's what I would do if I were you guys, okay? But I'm going to go ahead and do it on this form, and I want you to do this with me so we can sort of go through and get the idea of how this thing should sort of like look in this stuff. So I'm going to erase all of this up here that says the assignment estimate form. I'm simply going to delete it. I'm going to put my cursor next to that uh, uh, italic thing to get everything up to the top. So it says, put your name and contact at the top of the page. A logo is a good idea to use for a professional look, but make sure that your name, phone number, and all that kind of stuff is on here. So that's where I'm going to start this. So I am going to put Englehart Studio. You would put your, go ahead and please do your information because this is what you're going to turn in for your assignment. So you might as well do this shit now. So E-N-G-E-L-H-E-R-D, Studio Incorporated. <clears throat> 1201 South Prairie Avenue. Do I live in apartment 4502 or do I live in suite 4502 for my business? <laughs> They'll figure out the difference in suite and apartment, really. Yeah, as long as it's got the right number. <clears throat> well, let's, no, let's not give him too much credit. Okay, sorry. Now, this says to actually put an um, uh, uh, EIN or a social security number on this form. Don't you dare. Put, you can put your EIN number. Your EIN number is the number you get when you register a business in Illinois. So when you guys do your LLC, you would actually get a number. It's an EIN number, and that's the one that you would put on this guy. It's nowhere near as sensitive as a social security number. So mine is 36 dash three. God, this is so weird. Because I've done this a thousand times in my life. Three six, uh, three 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 seven two eight one. Should we just put yours down? Say what? Should we just put yours down? It doesn't matter. You don't need to put an EIN number down here. And then you need to look through this really quickly and say, okay, blah 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 blah. Is this got everything on it that it needs to be on it? And I'm going to say yes, it does. So I'm going to select the instructions and get rid of them. So again, holding on the shift key. Just get rid of those. <clears throat> Estimate is this part up here. Then date, we're going to put in here. I don't like the word date myself, so I'm actually going to go through this and simply put the date in. F-E-B-R-U-A-R-Y. Everything gets spelled out completely. There's no abbreviation in this, and there's also the month is always named. So it is going to be the 15th, <clears throat> comma, 
2018. I like this list estimate is valid for 90 dates from the date of issue, which you're telling them right now. So the client in here, the client that is going to be this, we said this is going to be for Lord and Taylor. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, you have to put in Lorda Taylor's address for this, so I'm going to drop this down to the next line to actually do that. Lord and Taylor's address down here. <clears throat> now, typically what I do when I do my invoices or my estimates like this, guys, is the Lord and Taylor information would go on here because I've already got all of my contact information. There's a logo that's at the top. I'll show you mine. So let me just show you mine. So you'll see how mine works. So it looks a little bit different than this, but all the same information is still there. <clears throat> So on mine, it's got logo at the top for Englehart Studio, and then it's got all the mailing and contact information is sitting down here below. So this is how mine works. So with me, mine starts out just with the date at the top. I think this is a little bit more attractive. Is there a logo scan to your website? It does. Um, And then double space, and then Lord and Taylor information goes here, L-O-R-D and Taylor. <clears throat> and then under it, you need to put the full address. So their address, I, I can't remember, their, their billing address is 424, 425, perfect, 424. So you guys would actually fill that whole part out. So I'm going to go back to the estimate form so that we're working on this at the same. So again, it was 424. Fifth Avenue. Right. Again, New York gets spelled out the 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 city. Uh -uh. Some people will say that you do not put the comma after the city. It depends. Uh, there's a big debate about that right now. And then what's the zip, Abby? Okay, the assignment description be as clear as possible. <clears throat> now for us. This is, again, this is not usage. This is, again, what you would essentially do is go back in and... Wouldn't this be funny if we all found out that we'd booked and paid for an airfare and hotel to Miami? Oh, my God. We're going. It's funny for us, not for you. I'm, like, excited. Yeah, exactly. I'm, like, we're planning a trip. <laughs> we're going. All right, so, guys, this was the description of what was going on right here. So, again... <laughs> The parameters of this job are basically this. Now, I would not do a list like this. Some people say lists are really good, though. And the reason people say a list is really good <clears throat> is that to put this information in a sentence can be misleading. There are things that in the language of a sentence can be construed one way or another the wrong way. So a lot of people would actually say that you should put this in a list form like this. So I'm okay with that. So I'm going to actually simply copy this. I would probably try to clean it up a little bit to make the language seem a little bit more professional. But nonetheless, this is what you need to actually be putting in here. So it is a description of the assignment. Be as clear as you can. Uh, make sure to include the number of images to be produced. Again, we haven't talked about we we said 12 images a day, so but you might want to probably be more succinct about that. Uh, outline the subject to be photographed. Any special requirements? Be as detailed as possible. This is a place to shine. Yeah, I didn't write this. So at any rate, assignment description. I am going to paste this in here. But know this about Photoshop, I mean about uh, Word, is that in Word, if we do a paste just like it is right now, it puts it in using the formatting and the font and all the kind of, uh, everything here that was, uh, that was in my list. I don't want to do that, so I'm going to Command Z to undo that. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop down my return key. Hey. I'm going to click Return to get rid of that. I'm going to come up to the Edit menu and come down and do paste and match formatting that will put this language down in the same font that so more, so far is actually being used in this so this is my list of what's actually going to be going on this licensing agreement this is where you need to be incredibly specific that was also on well I've got my usages right here so I added that on the bottom so I'm going to copy this uh, I'm going to cut this off I'm going to get rid of that guy 
and under this licensing agreement, and I would be more par I would be more specific about this, but again, we're running out of time, so just you should know this. You guys can actually go in and do this. So again, I'm going to get rid of this part right here. For the licensor, I would put in photographer. Again, the parties, just fill this stuff in for who these are. Um, so you would put in your name as the photographer. The client that's actually doing this, uh, again, would be Lord & Taylor. Again, if this was an art ad agency doing it for someone else, it, let's say it was VSA here in Chicago, they would be the client. Uh, <clears throat> but uh, 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 IBM could be the ultimate end user for this. Media permissions, this again is where you would put in that one-time North American. So one-time North American only for any constraints in this. Are there any other constraints in this? This is where, again, you would go through that whole plus system to decide, are there any restrictions that we're putting on this? Daniel. Right. That's fine. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. That's why I showed it to you guys. A lot of times taking that license and that language is just a better way of doing this. But again, if you guys, who in this room... Did anybody else in this room actually go through the plus thing? You should do it because, again, what you see happens is, is that it generates an XMP file. It doesn't generate something that's friendly for this, but then there's a reader that you can use that will read that XMP data and put it into a typical text language form, and you use that reader to get that information out of the XMP file, and then that's what you could copy and paste in here. Daniel? Okay. Okay. Perfect. Are we good on this though? Okay. So anyway, that's what goes in here. If there are any conditions, restrictions, any information, blah, 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 blah. All rights reserved other than those. <clears throat> then we come down to fees. So in the fee structure that exists in the spreadsheet that I've got, you can see they separate these things out. I've got the photo fees are sitting right here at 17.5 and then all the rest of my expenses are underneath this. You can simply copy this form right here. So I just did a command C. Usually, uh, if you haven't done anything else in here, the thing that culls all this information together also copies this to your pasteboard. But then you would come in here in your Word document. <clears throat> and in the Word document, I would not separate this part out. So this is just all that whole language. But it's everything in here. So I'm going to, again, click on the top, select everything, and go all the way down. This is just giving you a list of what you could possibly put in there. So I'm going to stop down here at the end part of it all. You can see here what they're calling miscellaneous supplies would be tape, bulbs, gels, other stuff like that. But again, I'm going to do a paste. And I don't get a paste um, uh, formatting here, but I do get a paste special. So pick paste special, and then you want to do unformatted text. Otherwise, it puts the spreadsheet in there for you instead. Now, we've got some problems here with how this thing is actually laid out because there are no tab stops that are really working for me in here. So we need to include those. To get to those tab stops, I'm going to click and drag through this entire thing. I am going to then get rid of, I don't want those little dots, the little dots that are right here. I don't want those little guys on there. So to get rid of them up here, and does your screen of Word look like mine? Do you have the formatting right here? No, our Word is Yeah, your Word is probably. So to get to your part. No, mine is. Oh, yeah, you've actually got it. It's at little three. The little drop down guy. Okay, so you want to click. First, you need to select the um, all the numbers uh, and the letters with it, and then come up to this little three dot guy. This thing drop down right here and go to none, and that will get rid of those little dots. However, we now need to add tabs to this to actually get this stuff to line up. Tabs are done right up here. That's what these little arrow guys are right up here. You can. This is already how it's set up for what we've got going right here. You can change these little guys. So for instance, I'm going to click on this one, the arrow. Everybody sees the uh, uh, ruler that I'm working on, right? You don't have this ruler? So go to view and click mine. It says ribbon. Yours says ruler down at the bottom. Yeah. So down and click on ruler at the bottom. Do you have the ruler now? Yeah. Okay. And do you have these two tab stops? There are these two arrows. Those are tab stops. If you click on one and start to drag it over, 
you will see that that controls. Now what this is controlling is the language that actually says include agency fee. So I'm going to drag mine over on my uh, on my little ribbon guy till it's about <clears throat> two and three of those clicks. And then I'm actually going to grab a different tab. Where did my ruler just go? So I just hid my ruler and brought it back out again. The next one we want to add is you want to add a tab that actually goes in the opposite direction and actually lines up decimals. So it's this little icon right over here. If you click on this drop down, you will see you have different options. I'm going to pick decimal tab and then I'm going to come over here and simply click somewhere over here to try and add a decimal tab. Or I'm going to, son of a bitch. Ever since I updated this computer, I think I've got to update to a new version of Word, which I actually have. I just don't have it here. So I'm going to come over here and just try to click on this to see. And it actually did add that tab. So And then it hit it again. So I'm going to show my ruler, hide it, and show it again. But you can see this tab over here, all the, the decimal points on the, on the zeros, next to the zeros are, line, are causing it to line up on this guy. So I'm going to click and drag this guy out just a little bit further to make it look a little bit nicer. I'm going to leave it right where it is because that doesn't seem to want to work for me. And then finally, I don't like all this text bold, so I'm going to simply click on the bold button here. And that is actually how I would format my stuff right here. Then finally, as we come down here and go down here to this, I don't personally like, I, if I can, I try to get this all on one page. This is not going to fit on one page. But also, I need to change this invoice to estimate. And then all expenses, the estimate are subject to 10% variance, the subtotal, and it's actually got all this stuff down here. I'm going to get rid of all of this language right here because it's already sitting up there. So I'm leaving this part right here. We already added the terms and conditions before um, to, uh, uh, for you guys. If you feel like these are too long and onerous, <clears throat> that's fine. Then in that case, you can use mine instead to get to my uh, terms and conditions. It, it's just conditions, it's not terms. Go back and look at our website. We're almost done and we're almost out of here, guys. And so for my website, it would come to estimating language. If you click on that guy, it'll drop, it'll download that guy. Again, it's another Word document. And you want to open that one up, estimating language. And I would simply copy this. It's one paragraph. And then go back to the entire terms and condition craziness here. I'm going to select this and go all the way to the bottom. And just do a paste. And now you've shortened all of that to just do the conditions uh, for uh, that I would actually put in for my estimate. So blah 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 blah. <clears throat> Does this make sense? Yeah. Probably. And if you their language was missing <clears throat> in this down here, <clears throat> it's not missing. No. So it's actually included in this. So this is where I would leave this. So finally, guys, again, you've got to ask yourself: Do you want to add notes to this or not? So for me, if you wanted to add the notes to this, you would again go back into your Excel spreadsheet. You would simply click and drag down on this and then copy this, Command C, then go back to your Word document, put up a title under this that says Notes, not all caps, colon, and underneath that do a paste special again unformatted text because you don't want to paste otherwise you paint you paste in a, a, a spreadsheet and then again I would go through every single one of these uh, and list out how they were figured so photo fee 
five days shooting at $3,500 a day, two days travel at, or my travel days are probably, my travel days, I, I don't know if my travel days are included in there or not. They're actually further down. So again, you would go through and list all of this stuff. Does this make sense? And then finally, and this is the important part, come up and do a file and save as. The save as goes into the same folder that we just did before that's on the desktop. In the desktop, it was, again, this folder named after this. If you simply select your name up here and click on the name of your spreadsheet, it will actually name it for your document so that the document and the spreadsheet have the exact same name. The only difference is the extension on the end, which makes them not overwrite one another. And then you save that. Now, if you have to do a revision, you simply need to open these things back up and do a revision. Are we good on this? Yeah. Are you happy you've done your homework? Yes. This part right here, again, I went into the Excel spreadsheet. I selected only this column, not the whole thing, just this column of, 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 of things. Command-C to copy that, and then just again, back into the Word document. Up under Notes, simply select all this. Imagine that this wasn't here. And then again, under Notes right here, up to Edit paste special, unformatted text, and OK. I have a problem. So when you select the actual graph, I had to select everything. It wouldn't do the green option. Yeah. Wait, what? So you know how you formatted it to where it yeah, had the extra? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, I get that. I get that. I get that. So you could just copy this part right here. You could just copy all of this right here. And go through and just get rid of the numbers. Okay. And also, when you do the estimates, do you have to include the agency, or can you put that in the notes? I put in there just so it could go in the notes. I would have it in both places. Oh, I just I have it. Do you want us to add the notes and everything before we turn this in? It would be great if you did. Okay. Might as well do something. <laughs> All right, are we good on this, guys? Yeah. Can you go back to the uh, The spreadsheet? Yeah. Yeah. My numbers. Well, what's your total, your final total? Uh, 164. Uh, 164. Just do it for what you've done it for. It's fine. It doesn't have to match mine. Okay. You'll make more money. Actually, I'm outbidding you. <laughs> All right, are we good on this, guys? Yeah. All right. Bottom to the uh, others, the extras. So, this? Where is your photography travel fee at? In the very top, right here under travel fee. Two at seventeen. Yeah. Again, the numbers don't have to match. All right. Yeah. On the notes at the bottom. Yeah. It's everything you did. You don't have the numbers. It's just what you, what you did to get those numbers. Exactly. And if you don't turn that into a client, that's fine. But you need to do them for yourself because. Let's say you don't get the job, or you get the same a client says a year from now, I want you to do the same bid. We want to shoot again. We love what you did. We want to do the same bid. And you go to yourself, I don't have any clue how I did that. Okay. So it's a reminder for you to say, oh, this is how I did it. I was charging oh. this way, and oh, I was figuring travel this way, and this is what. It's just a reference for you okay. so that, because you think you'll remember it, but you never will. Okay. Uh, also... On our schedules, we only have the photographer and the two models. Is that all we need? No. Well, you could put in hair and makeup and that kind of stuff, but I'm just booking them for the day. But is this good for the assignment? Yes, it's fine. Thank you. I have another question. Shoot. In the ASMP, yeah. there's a section that says conditions, and then it says state and international terms and conditions apply to the license. We suggest the use of all ASMP terms and conditions back into the bandwidth estimate. Right. So we don't have to put conditions there? Wait, it says what? Hang on one second. Hang on. Let me just get this to stop.